Uh, welcome everybody to Index Seminars in Toronto. Uh, today we have uh, uh, Parag, Parag Bhalera here with us. He is uh, fascinated by spirituality and loves to study ancient literature and uh, provide a scientific perspective on what he reads and studies and delves into deeper meanings of what our ancients have, have uh, written down and produced. Today's presentation is uh, focusing on really a book he recently published really two days ago on uh, Purusha the Demystified, which uh, reflects on the scientific knowledge in our literature, specifically on this, uh, on this Sukta or, or, uh, uh, or him. And uh, let's, uh, and according to Paragji, let's see how it comes up after 45 minutes. He says, after studying this, after thinking about it, it gives him immense joy. Hopefully, we get that little bit transferred to us as well today. So, Definitely. Paragji, over to you. Definitely. Thank you. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadhi Tamas Tumavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Namaste. Welcome everybody for this uh, very exciting event. I'm sure I'm excited and you all will be as or more excited as we go through this uh, journey of next 45 minutes. So we'll discuss few topics in about 45 minutes and then open up for questions. So if you have any questions, please uh, make a note and we will discuss those uh, towards end of the session today. Before we get into the topic itself, uh, there is some background and some you know, underlying information that I would like to share. We are going to talk about one of the sukta or one of the hymns in Vedic literature. And of course, as you see on the screen, it is Purusha Sukta. Purusha Sukta talks about creation of universe. Of course, in Vedic literature, there are multiple suktas, multiple uh, descriptions about how the universe came about. Uh, but Purusha Sukta is probably most widely accepted, most commonly recited. When we do any uh, rituals, most of the rituals follow Purusha Sukta or Shri Sukta in um, all of our activities. And many people chant it on a regular basis. This sukta also appears in every Ved. So it is there, uh, all four Veds, if you see, this sukta appears in every Ved. There are some variations, but the mass portion, the major portion is same in all the Veds. So before we get into it, what is Ved? What is Purusha Sukta? And wh what are we talking about? Why are we talking about this? So as a lot of us know, we think there is a general understanding that Vedas are our scriptures, our religious books. They talk about God, they talk about Hinduism, they talk about rituals. Well, yes and no, they do talk about some of those aspects. But if you understand the word Veda, Ved comes from a root word called Vid. Vid means to know. And Veda means knowledge. And we use that word with in various contexts in our day-to-day -day life also. Like a person who is very wealthy, we call him Dhanavan. He has a lot of Dhana, so he becomes Dhanavan. Person who is uh, very strong, he has a lot of Bala, we call him Balavan. Same way, the person who has a lot of knowledge or a lot of Vid, we call him Vidwan. Right? So this with word, exactly same word, with indicates knowledge and Veda indicates, uh, so with indicates to know and Veda indicates knowledge. Again, the word is Veda, not Veda. Okay, those are two different words, very commonly mispronounced, but Veda is wrong pronunciation, Veda is right word. Anyway, now when we talk about Ved, what is this Ved? Who wrote it? When did they write it? All those questions start popping up in our mind. And we won't go into too many details uh, and we won't derail our conversation a lot. But 
exact date of when the Vedas are written is really speaking unknown. There are lot of scholars they study Vedas and there are lot of evidences of geographical evidences, river based evidences, astronomical evidences, and things like that. So they study study those evidences and come up with the date. But if you look at most common studies, the dates go back to twenty four thousand BCE. So even if we there are you know discrepancies about the dates, definitely it's a very ancient literature, a, a very ancient scripture. And also there is a question about who wrote these Vedas. And there is again uh, most people think. that uh, veda vyas ji or maharshi vyas uh, wrote ved that is right he wrote it in the text format but he is not the author he is not the person who actually wrote these mantras or discovered these mantras or formulated these mantras whatever we want to say vedas are said to be a purusheya now again our modern mind you know becomes very uh, inquisitive very agitated how can it be a purusheya apaurushya is not man written or not man made so how can it be not man made if it is written somebody must have written it right so that kind of question comes up in our uh, nastic mind sometimes scientific mind sometimes practical mind sometimes whatever so it is not really uh, you know nobody wrote it and suddenly a paper appeared on the earth on which all the vedas were written that is not how it is basically multiple rishis Vedas are not written by one rishi. Multiple rishis contributed to different mantras, different sections of the Vedas. And what they say is, we did not really compose it. When we were in samadhi state, those occurred to us. We heard those in the environment, and then we just kind of formulated and we just talked to other people, taught to other people, our disciples, and so on. So they were so humble. They did not take any credit. they never said i wrote this and that is why they are not supposed to be said you know, that they are written by those rishis and that is why they are called apaurushaya for some of the mantras some of the suktas there is mention of the rishi who first heard that or who first uncovered or realized these mantra and that rishi is called drashta rishi drashta rishi for different mantras or suktas and there are lot of suktas that are not uh, attributed to any rishi now the vedic literature has literally immense knowledge you pretty much take a topic it can be medicine it can be agriculture it can be nyaya shastra it can be social studies anything there is wealth of knowledge available we are going to focus on one aspect today and that is creation of the universe now it is important that we study we discuss and we understand this text in the context of creation of universe it is everybody agrees any uh, scholar that you talk to they all agree that yes uh, purusha sukta talks about creation of universe but then when they try to interpret it they try to interpret it in spiritual way religious way they talk about god they talk about different things and they many people not all of them but many people cannot relate their interpretation to the core topic of creation of the universe again i am going to use the word creation little loosely because our belief says that it is not creation it is manifestation okay this entire thing existed it just manifested in the form of universe that we perceive today so without going into much of those background topics we'll go and we'll start talking about the purusha sukta itself okay now purusha sukta we are going to discuss various aspects with scientific mindset and with the context of creation of universe we are not going to talk about rituals and religion and things of that nature we'll keep it uh, keep our focus very very uh, scientific what is purusha sukta purusha will see sukta is basically collection of some mantras so few mantras maybe 5 10 15 20 depending on different sukta 
few mantras come together and form what we call it as sukta and the word sukta itself says what it means it is su ukta su is well ukta it said so well said or very well composed or very informative very good information is uh, uh, combined or list, uh, mentioned in sukta what is mantra mantra is different than shlok we will not go again into details but most of the uh, chanting that we do about different stutis of different gods typically those are shlokas even bhagavad gita uh, most common uh, scripture those are shlokas whereas mantra has different uh, context different way how do you say the mantra you cannot sing a mantra like gayatri mantra you hear different people sing in different tune uh, that is not really right there is specific guideline on how to pronounce a mantra we'll come to important part is purusha what is purusha now in the general context when we say purusha it is male human being right typically that is how we interpret the word purusha and that is the conventional traditional meaning but in this context we are not talking about any human being definitely not the gender bias that it is you know masculine or male dominated and no place for women or female nothing like that purusha has nothing to do with humans or gender at all we'll see how people interpret or break the word purusha and what is the right way to interpret it and then we'll understand what it means so most scholars again if you read any literature any explanation any commentary typically they uh, break this word purusha as puri shete or puri shayanat puri is world universe different context you can take different meanings lot of people try to relate it to human body and in that context pura means human body so and shayanat is sleeping so the one who is sleeping in the universe is purusha is very common interpretation now when i tried to understand this i said i came thought about two th- two things one is if it is sleeping it won't be active it won't help in creation it won't help in sustenance maintenance growth nothing it is just sleeping so maybe shayanat is not or sleeping is not the right uh, meaning also as you see on the screen the red red part of the text there are two similar sounding alphabets sh and sh and for simple analogy there is a sh that we use in shiva and a sh that we use in krishna so here the sh from krishna is used and not sh from shiva so shayana uses sh from shiva which is not a right sh so that interpretation seems to be incorrect if you see right word purusha the sh from krishna then it gives you different meaning it is it gives you pura ushayati usha word we have heard it is dawn or early morning time frame that is the time when we start getting all the energy that is when everything starts to come to life everything uh, becomes energetic everything b- comes to life so this purusha is the energy the shakti the strength the power that empowers the entire universe if you take the right sh and use it as ushayati rather than shayati or shayana okay so purusha sukta describes that this entire universe was created through a yajna now again what is yajna typically we think yajna is you know where you we put some bricks and some wood and set fire and put make some offerings now again we have to maintain the context context is creation of the universe now the if the universe is not yet created this purusha is creating the universe there are no bricks there is no wood there are no oblations nothing is available right so the yajna does not mean in many contexts in many texts when there is a mention of yajna it is not necessarily traditional yajna yajna is a process you give something with your intent and you get something 
different out of it, different form out of it. That process of transformation is called yajna, and we are going to focus on that aspect uh, of yajna. Okay. With that, we'll uh, start with uh, first mantra. The first mantra says, "Sahastra Shirsha Purusha." सहस्राक्षस सहस्रपात सभूमिन विश्वतो वृत्वा अत्यतिष्ठ दशांगुलम सो दिस इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दैट पुरुष द पर्सन हु द पुरुष हु स्टार्टेड क्रिएटिंग दिस यूनिवर्स दिस इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन वी विल सी द लिटरल ट्रांसलेशन वी विल अंडरस्टैंड द मिस इंटरप्रिटेशंस एंड वी विल अंडरस्टैंड साइंटिफिक मीनिंग और साइंटिफिक एस्पेक्ट्स अगेन वन मोर थिंग आई वांट टू be very honest and upfront i don't claim to be expert in vedic literature nor do i claim to be uh, expert in sanskrit language i have taken references from lot of dictionaries lot of uh, different literatures lot of commentaries to come up with my interpretation which is uh, with scientific mindset also in the interest of time we will not cover entire sukta in details so i'm going to pick few uh, Uh, few sukta sorry few mantras from the sukta and we will analyze those okay so the other uh, uh, part so this sukta this first mantra says sahastra shirsha a, a being with thousand heads thousand eyes and thousand legs and he covers the entire universe and extend beyond the universe but Ten angula or ten fingers or ten inches. Now, when we look at this mantra, some devotee who has good artistic sense comes up with a visualization. He draws he draws a male devata with thousands of heads, thousands of shastra and astra and weapons in his hand, and doing some creation kind of aspect. if you remember the cover slide of my presentation a human shaped body was sitting there trying to you know do something so all these are our interpretations or our visualizations and you will see such visualizations in many 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 situations and those all lead to non scientific misinterpretation of the original uh, objective of that uh, figure nataraj is one case vishnu slipping on the serpent bed is one case so many cases will not go into that so when i started reading this mantra i first of all i wondered why are they talking about only head eyes and legs why are they not talking about mouth and nose and ears and tummy and hands and so many other body parts right so there has to be some reason some meaning to using only these three now if we go back to the modern theory of creative creation of universe the most common most widely accepted theory is big bang theory there are some limitations some objections keeping those aside big bang theory is the most commonly accepted theory what does big bang theory say there was an explosion and through explosion the universe came about now it, this mantra describes a very very similar concept it says sahastra shirsha what is shirsha shirsha indicates individuality today also we say per head right so per head meaning for each individual so this indicates that there were individual objects when the universe was created there were thousands of individual objects got created and there are other uh, Uh, suktas other references they talk about that explosion also uh, how the sound waves were there and they got compressed and how the explosion happened and all those things are described somewhere else so that explosion created this thousands of unique individual objects with sahastra aksha aksha is eyes what do eyes indicate eyes indicate shine or luster or energy right when we look at somebody's eyes we say oh such energetic eyes such energetic person based on eyes right and eyes represent energy spark things like that so these thousands of objects were glowing 
those were emitting light those were shining objects so if we were to see then it is something like you see a burst of a firecracker thousands of sparks uh, come out of that uh, blast and start going out and those are very shiny sparks it is sim very similar uh, thing if you try to visualize this and sahastra path path is thousands of legs what do legs indicate legs indicate motion so these objects were individual unique objects they were shining and those were traveling those were moving that is what the first line says and if you if even if i'm saying objects or sparks just for simplicity of understanding to give some analogy these were not like small objects these were gigantic objects and the descriptions say that their probably their diameter was few light years so those were really really gigantic uh, objects those got thrown out or those got created now that purusha in addition to that that purusha vishvato vrutva and still stays the shangulam beyond the entire universe that is known to us so what that means is he covers the entire universe that purusha covers the entire universe and goes beyond the known universe now this is also very simple and very logical if somebody created an object there needs to be space to create that object and if it is constantly expanding constantly moving constantly growing then there should be space in which that creation can grow like for example if i try to blow a balloon that balloon this room is a space in which the balloon grows or it blows if we try to uh, blow keep a balloon in a small bottle and try to blow it won't blow it won't blow beyond size of that bottle or size of that uh, container right whereas the universe is constantly expanding so somebody somebody has to provide that space now space also is a term we are using in current context of course there are the we say that space itself got created with the universe but what are that equivalent of space is he provides that purusha provides that space for the universe to form and to grow and that purusha itself it covers that entire universe and here the word says dashangulam so it extends by 10 angular or 10 inches now why 10 inches who has gone to measure that is it is 10 nobody right so 10 here indicates infinite in decimal system there are digits from 0 to 9 anything that cannot be expressed in 0 to 9 can be treated as infinite uh, i see lot of people are popping some messages uh, yeah you can do that but we are going to discuss some question answer at the end and also due to some typing limitations you might see some uh, mismatch or uh, errors in the type itself so don't focus on that let's focus on the uh, scientific analysis thank you okay so it extends much beyond the known universe uh, that we understand that we can fa fathom or we can uh, realize that is the first mant mantra says so it describes the state at the time of that explosion at the time of that blast and how thousands of objects got created and started moving now if the universe is created by this purusha itself and we know that there was no material available there is no evidence there is no scientific analysis which says oh there was some soil he took that there were few trees who took he took that and then combined and pre created something no there was nothing available so whatever is created purusha himself manifested in all those forms so whatever ever existed in the context of the universe whatever exists today and whatever is going to exist in future that is nothing but different forms of this purusha itself everything purusha eva idagam sarvam sarvam whatever you can interpret analyze understand everything is nothing but this purusha itself bhutam whatever was there in the past whatever is bhavyam is what are going to happen in future everything is nothing but this form or manifestation of the uh, purusha itself and 
this purusha he did not just create that blast he did not just create that universe and just went back to sleep no that's not the case so what it also does he is the master ishan ishan is master of this whole universe he governs he controls endlessly supports that universe and provides required energy required substance for the universe to sustain and grow yad annena atirohati anna is food so when again we talk about food we think about what are rice and bread and potatoes and stuff like that that is not the case anna is any substance that supports sustenance and growth for us as human being anna is what are i just mentioned rice and bread and things like that but for different species anna is different different things for this universe anna is different and the purusha provides that anna and again there are, if you read the book there are little bit more details about what that anna is what the modern theory calls that how it relates to what we today understand or today think as black energy things of that nature those, those are explained much in details we won't go into too many details again in the interest of time okay but the important thing is this for sustenance and you know growth of the universe the purusha provides everything that is required again the last word says atirohati which indicates growth <coughs> which means the universe is growing now today if you look at uh, different theories there are theories that talk about uh, expanding universe so there is a theory of expanding universe there are theories of contracting universe also there is a theory of oscillating universe also there are multiple theories but as of today the universe appears to be growing and for the growth this purusha provides whatever is required for growth and of course sustenance of the universe that is uh, what we are talking about in this first uh, or the second mantra now as we go forward it clarifies something else it says again i'm just picking few uh, aspects of the mantra we won't go into uh, every detail in the interest of time it says padosh vishva bhutani kripadasya mrutan divi so padosh is pada is one fourth one quarter so it says this entire universe is just one quarter of it or just one small part of that purusha that's not everything that that purusha had he just took small part of itself and created the universe the majority part of it about 75% again this 75% and 25% is just um, to give us an idea of a small portion and much bigger portion but that much bigger portion is still unmanifest it is still there maybe it will manifest other day we don't know right but that purusha has just taken small piece of it and then created the universe now if something needs to be created there needs to be material there needs to be instruments and there need to be creator right when you look at the pot for example the um, the soil uh, the mitti what are you call it that is the material the potter's wheel and things like that though that is the equipment and the potter himself is a created so a creator so any creation these three causes need to exist now when purusha created this universe nothing existed so where did all these things come from so purusha himself became the material he himself became required equipment and he himself became the creator and the process through which this raw material was processed using the instruments by the creator that process is nothing but uh, yajna that process is described as yajna in various uh, contexts in various uh, texts okay we'll see few other mantras so we'll skip through few okay so in this mantra the sixth mantra there is a mention about ritus and it says that these ritus were created and those ritus were also offered in the yajna now this also when i was looking at it i could not understand how can you capture a ritu how can you get your hands around a ritu hold it in your hands and offer it in the yajna that's not possible right so here 
again when they talk about three rutus vasanta grishma and sharada vasanta is nothing but spring grishma is uh, summer and sharad is autumn or fall season in north american lingo so why are they talking about these three when most of the literature talks about six rutus they are talking only about three rutus so we have to again understand it in right context it says the spring was ghee it was offered as ghee how can i offer one season as a ghee then the summer season was offered as fuel and autumn season was the oblation now how does that work so this does not talk or this does not mean any rutus that we understand today it has nothing to do with spring summer autumn winter nothing what this really talks about is three aspects of creation which is creation sustenance and destruction so spring is the season when you know the uh, trees will start to bloom the flowers bloom entire nature comes to life uh, comes to life so that livelihood that coming to life aspect is described by formation of spring aspect then the summer indicates sustenance summer is gives us all the energy so everybody is energetic enthusiastic we do lot of activities in summer right so this activity is the growth aspect the sustenance aspect is indicated by summer and what happens in autumn or fall or sharad all the leaves fall down and the entire nature appears as if everything is dead so that destruction aspect is indicated by autumn so basically in this mantra it says that along with creation of the universe the mechanism of creation sustenance and destruction also got created and that mechanism is very important because without that mechanism nothing can really exist we cannot have imagine that you know we have a person who is born and never died everything that exists and i mean everything everything that exists has defined life span and it may not be defined in our context we may not know it we may not understand it but it has a life span after that life span it will get destroyed and that aspect that anything that the purusha has created anything that is part of the universe it gets created it gets maintained it grows it becomes stronger and eventually it dies so that aspect is described in this mantra this is not really describing conventional seasons that we uh, talk about today or that we understand today also this is a very important uh, mantra and again one aspect i am going to touch upon uh, two aspects in this mantra one is it says trisapta samidhakrutaha tri sapta that means 3 and 7 or 3 times 7 3 times 7 is 21 now again as i was reading i thought why did they say 3 times 7 if they wanted to say 21 there is a word for 21 they could have just said 21 samidha but then i understood that they are not talking about 21 they are talking about three sets of seven each whatever those things are and we'll see that so in the part of this process of creation and now this is relating more to solar system and earth we skip few mantras in between so now it is more relating to uh, earth and uh, some aspects of so our solar system so there are 21 aspects but those 21 aspects are divided into three groups of seven each that contributed towards formation and sustenance of the earth and that is why they are using the word three sapta and not using the word 21 if you use traditional uh, commentary they talk about different combinations the um, sense organs perception organs mind body intellect all those things they add up and say oh these are 21 but then those texts don't uh, explain why three sapta is called and not 21 and how do those things that they interpret how those are related to creation aspect 
they are not able to explain that so here what we are talking about those three aspects and i'll briefly touch upon those the first is uh, the entire solar system apart from earth there are seven other objects uh, planets and uh, sun so sun moon and um, other uh, planets they provide right balance of gravitational forces which helps each other to stay in their orbit and it is a proven fact so those seven objects is one set of seven right seven including sun moon and other planets the second set of seven is the energy or light that we get from sun it has seven different components and we won't go into those details right now but those seven different components seven different types of sun rays that is second set and the third set is different types of energies including there is a clear mention of infrared ultraviolet electricity and uh, things like that so all those and they are clearly mentioned very scientifically mentioned nothing imaginary or uh, fantasizing here nothing mythical about it very scientific uh, details again in the book i have mentioned all those in details but those three sets of seven contributed and continue to contribute towards uh, sustenance formation of the earth then i am going to touch upon last part which is abadnan purusham pashum again many people in uh, interpret that as a pashu or an animal was sacrificed in the yajna now this leads to lot of confusion lot of questions lot of different things that you know your scriptures promote animal sacrifice which is absolutely not right let's not go everywhere else uh, stay in the context again what is the pashu we are still talking this mantra is still talking about earth itself is being formed if earth itself is not yet formed the subsequent mantras talk about uh, creation of life on the earth so no life is created earth itself is in the process of creation which animal which animal are you sacrificing which animal are you killing where it doesn't make any sense it is absolutely not logical so when we again talk about this we have to understand different meanings each word has multiple meanings we have to understand right meaning in the right context so pashu one of the meaning of pashu is also soul or atman right or the purusha itself so purusha itself sacrificed itself in the yajna which again was purusha itself which was being conducted by purusha himself and uh provided the material for this yajna and for this creation so the pashu here is not a literal animal but the uh, context is purusha himself offered himself completely and uh, created this universe okay we'll go to what time is it okay okay this is again one mantra which again leads to lot of criticism lot of misunderstanding so the previous mantra says okay if you are talking about purusha now again here they are trying to uh, imagine that in the form of a human body or in the human form and the question is okay when that purusha converted himself into different aspects of the universe what happened to his mukha or his mouth what happened to his arms what happened to his thighs what happened to his legs what what did different parts of uh, that purusha's uh, body how did they manifest what did they manifest into and the answer goes into next few uh, mantra so it says brahmanosya mukhamasi the mouth became brahman rajanya or kshatriya they were made from his arms thighs were uh, turned into vaishya and shudras were born from his feet it again says oh, okay so now you are promoting varnashram unfortunately they don't even say varnashram they say caste system this is no caste system this has nothing to do with caste system again this is very initial part of formation of the you know, life on the earth 
how can there be humans and how can they start categorizing themselves right so again this is not talking about different race definitely or even awareness system what this is talking about is for sustenance of a jeeva of any creature including human there are few aspects that are required and those aspects were created and those were instilled into each living being so they can survive the mukha and head indicates uh, knowledge so for survival everybody needs some knowledge how to go about something right and even we see that even the microorganisms they have knowledge they may not have brain that we think of they may not have a explicit body organ called brain but they have intelligence of doing certain things which they are supposed to do right so that aspect of um, life is called brahman then everybody has desire to live a desire to struggle if we don't get food we will run around we'll climb on the tree pluck the fruits do whatever if we see some threat we will run around or we'll attack uh, we will run away or attack right so all these aspects which are related to um, physical strength those are interpreted or those are indicated rather by rajanya quality or kshatriya quality so those qualities were also instilled vaishya are traders businessmen right and vaishya indicate two qualities one is accumulation of wealth and trading of material now for our sustenance also we accumulate food we accumulate uh, energy in our body and use that body when required we give that uh, energy for different activities so those aspects are indicated by vaishya and shudra indicates the physical activity like walking running you know cutting the trees and building the house or whatever those kind of activities which are required again for sustenance of every jeeva or every creature those activities or those aspects are indicated by shudra nothing to do with any caste system nothing to do even with varnashram system at this stage in my opinion okay so basically as the purusha was creating life on the earth he made sure that there is creation sustenance and destruction and while they are in the create phase or when they are they exist there are those four aspects which will help them in their survival that is what those mechanisms were created and instilled in different uh, creatures so that the life can be formed and life can go on this time check okay uh this again talks how moon got uh, became mind and from i his eyes uh sun was born from his mouth fire and uh, other controls were born the breath was born from the vayu and so there are all the detailed descriptions and very very scientific uh similarly it says uh, the directions were born from ears so again when we talk about okay the sun was born from his eyes the directions were born from his uh, ears how how does it really work directions are not born there is not one place from which all the directions were born and went everywhere so when they say the direction is are born it means the sense of direction is born through ears and that is true even with the modern science our ears has a they have a um, organ or apparatus whatever you call it in our ear called labyrinth that gives us sense of direction so it it can distinguish between intensity of sound from two ears and decide the direction so that sense of direction came from ears that is what it means when it says directions were born through ears okay so those are the again important thing is we need to study all the mantra study all the text with right context and use the right meanings of the word which are relevant to that context and not the conventional meanings or random meanings that leads to lot of misunderstanding and confusion these literatures these scriptures are thousands of years of old 
so when those were written or initially understood they had very scientific meaning over the period of thousands of years that real meaning got lost and which continued to follow that in a literal way and in a ritual way which is not bad but that does not give us right information and it leads to lot of criticism and lot of misunderstanding and that is a very unfortunate thing about uh, our heritage that most of the things even you know my kids they go to school here in us and they get questioned oh how come you are monkey god and how come and various things like that and we don't make any attempt to understand the reality we never read valmiki ramayana and we also promote misconceptions and misunderstandings and pass those on through generations so this is one of my attempts to uh, try to understand what the scientific aspect and scientific meanings and interpretations could be and not get carried away by literal meanings or traditional meanings or conventional meanings so with that i just wanted to uh, conclude as i said we'll cover about 45 minutes we are uh, we have crossed those 45 minutes and we'll keep a few minutes to different uh, questions that you might have again don't point out uh, text uh, errors in the presentation i know those and i had some limitations with you know devnavati typing and things like that so let's not go there let's focus on the core uh, content also this is the book that um, explains all these uh, aspects in much more details and lot of scholars have given their inputs and their commentary and the book is available on amazon in uh, many regions you can order i'll highly encourage you read the book it will answer probably many of your questions and uh, there is my contact information in the book also or you will get it here also uh, you can feel free to reach out to me and i will be more than happy to understand your perspectives and correct my perspectives if those are wrong at any uh, point so prasad ji with that i will stop for now and uh, we'll open for questions excellent excellent parag ji a very good the book looks super interesting definitely worth the buy there's no doubt about it and you know the 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 glimpse of the book you know with a few slides or few examples you gave definitely uh, would drive people to buy the book and read all about what you have written excellent Thank excellent you. work uh we have a question from yadu mohir uh, yadu ji please go ahead uh yes uh, you started saying about the difference between mantra and shloka uh, the correct word should be richa not the mantra or yes sir, uh, in rigved they are called richa you are right yes so you know so the that should be the first correction i would like to point out and in general uh, it has uh, you know what you have tried to give and i do understand them and uh, there are lots of other interpretations from sayana to everywhere now and uh, i hope you had a chance to read uh, satavalekar's book also uh, purusha sukta uh, that gives the uh, because when you said uh, brahmanasya mukham asi the early mantra is mukham kimasya kau bahu kauru ka pada uchete so he is asking the question what is that represented represents to so when the samaj was formed the samaj is the face so brahmanas are the face for that samaj that is what uh, they were trying to say and pada is uh, the foundation uh, the if one looks at a foundation regardless whether it is a human being or a industry or anywhere that pada is the foundation without that foundation nothing can be done means you may have an industry you may have a pattern you may you have uh, money but if you don't have workers to work with the pada which is necessary uh, to uh, proceed it it cannot work so just, uh, uh, just you're, something you're right. to think about you are right and that goes well when you are interpreting chaturvarni this is in my understanding this is not interpretation of chaturvarna because the samaj is not formed yet when that mantra comes right 
So yes, in Bhagavad Gita, when you say Chaturvarnya Maya system, yes, that time you can interpret uh, and give those uh, meanings, and those are absolutely right. And there are even much complex or much deeper meanings uh, which are very very relevant and practical even to Chaturvarnya. And if you are interested, we can talk offline about those. But um, in my understanding. this mantra is not talking about chaturvarni yet because the samaj or the society is not formed anyway we'll go to next question i'm not cutting you off i just want to give opportunity to others and you can reach out to me one on one sorry mahendra ji please go ahead yeah uh, thank you very much professor for excellent uh, presentation i'm not a professor <laughs> 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 thank you <laughs> semantics aside it was an excellent presentation <laughs> thank you uh i just wanted to ask you what has the part played by the western societies in terms of plagiarizing ideas from uh, our hindu scriptures and then translating into their own particular uh, scientific language uh, is there any truth in that that the western societies have taken a lot from um Uh, you know sanatan dharma and our scriptures what is your personal experience of uh, of of uh, is there any truth in that very Because good question said... very good question so again i don't want to be very critical about it i want to honestly appreciate because unfortunately we in spite of having this scripture next to us for years and years and years we have used it only to keep it in the puja room or whatever or worship and prayer place and put ganda and akshara every day on that beyond that many of us don't do anything with those scriptures right whereas these western people have made a sincere attempt to analyze it understand it and make some sense out of it and yes if they when they understood they might have stolen some ideas okay but uh, hey we had it next to us what did we do with it why why are we complaining about them doing something that we did not do so yes there are few examples few rumors and combination of uh, western society interpreting these uh, scriptures and making claims of uh, their those as their discoveries but okay when when there is time there are scholars who cross reference different texts and prove that it is not their discovery it is there in uh, some of the scriptures but if they are doing it i am in a way i am happy about it because we are ignoring it somebody is at least making an attempt okay, thank you uh, aritra ghosh please go ahead can you unmute yourself first Yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, very much. I want to uh, thank Mr. Uh, Padak sir for this wonderful presentation he have given, and uh, this has helped me a lot in writing an essay which is regarding the origin of this universe and this uh, life, the evolution of life in this universe. So, sir, can you please uh, throw light on the fifth mantra, uh, which basically relates to the. Um, multiplication of the purusha to uh, form multiple multiple copies of itself so can we just uh, draw a comparison between this and the quasar which which uh, is there in the operin helden model of um, uh, evolution of life or the creation of life uh, in the chemical based evolution which refers to the ultimate uh, biological formation of life and it is also been proved in the miller rudy experiment so can you just throw light in this thing am i correct or not uh, yes you are correct first of all uh, thank you and congratulations for taking such initiative very very interesting and important uh, also i will recommend that there are few other sukta uh, nasadiya sukta narayan sukta and of course purusha sukta you can refer to those you will get a uh, few more insights uh, fifth mantra again uh, not to go into too much details in the interest of time but what it is talking about is how different forms came into existence so from that purusha the virat purusha or viraj purusha uh, came up from that viraj the adhi purusha came and that adhi purusha then 
further transformed himself into creating earth then land on the earth and then you know specific islands and not islands uh, continents on the earth but uh, again please note down my email address i would be very interested in understanding what you are writing and what your interpretations are and if at all possible uh, add some value to that so in the bhagavad gita or when when reciting the bhagavad gita lord krishna showed arjuna the virat purusha form of his would that be related to this in any way it may or may not be the again the important thing to understand prasad ji is we as devotee oriented people bhakti oriented people we try to personify everything so you will see whenever there is a mention of uh, vishwarup darshan you will see a krishna figure in the middle and thousands of things coming around him and things like that is that really the uh, form arjun saw nobody knows because nobody saw that form i don't think again there are different arguments i don't think it was a visual form it was a intellectual form that arjun realized or arjun kind of saw it without you know physical sight so we don't know uh, but is it same maybe yes but it might be in the current state in the sense how this purusha is currently supporting the uh, sustenance and growth of the earth it will be more in that context than the historic context where that uh, explosion happened and the universe was being created excellent so i like to thank you again parag ji for bringing this topic up and uh, it looks like an excellent book and uh, looking forward to reading reading the book again purchasing and reading the book and Absolutely. hopefully you'll come back with a different set of slides and different set of uh, ruchas to present to us next time absolutely so with them i appreciate you coming and uh, thank you for every thank you everyone for joining as well Thank appreciate you. Uh, you inviting me i had a great time with our wonderful audience have a great day or great night depending on where you are